those who remember and those who walk to the death The attack was made without a hitch from a southeasterly direction to an altitude of 15,000 feet. It was led by Flight Lieutenant Dudson. The squadron half rolled into a dive on the target and succeeded in securing a large number of hits in the target area. As the aircraft half rolled into position, the heavy flak opened up and due to lateral errors only were all the same number of our aircraft with severe damage. The dive was carried out from 12,000 feet down to 5,000 feet, with the aircraft being followed all the way down by heavy flak, finally crossing out of 500 feet amid a barrage of incendiary bullets. Miraculously, only two of our aircraft suffered minor damage. The one flown by Flying Officer Burgess was hit in the radiator, and the other flown by Flying Officer Forrest was hit in the tailplane. All aircraft returned safely. The operation was deemed successful returned at 20 to 30 minutes. However, an inspection of the photographic evidence on the very next day showed that some of the hits were not as successful as they had thought. And it was planned then to make another bombing raid on Guernsey. However, the weather was bad that day, and as we know, D-Day was, uh, was put back 24 hours because of that weather. So on June the 5th, 1944, Departure from her was 0820 hours. The mission again dive bombing and eight Typhoon 1Bs. Having received confirmation that the last raid on the radar installation at St. Petersburg was 75% complete, the squadron set out to finish the job in knocking over the one remaining freyer in the northeastern corner of Fort George. The freyer air Freya radar had a, a range of 100 miles, so you could understand why the British wanted it knocked down. Carrying two nose-fused instantaneous 500 medium uh, capacity bombs each, the squadron led by Flight Lieutenant Savile attacked the highly defended air area and the target in a long dive from 12,000 feet down to 4,000 feet in an easterly direction. All the bombs appeared to burst in or on or very near the target itself. However, a large disturbance was created in the sea a mile offshore, and at first was believed to be the road bar. The flight of Kenneth Savile was not seen after the dive, and it was later presumed that his aircraft had been hit by the intensive flak and failed to recover from that dive. The remaining seven aircraft and pilots returned unharmed at 09.20 hours. June the 5th, 1944, departure 09.55 search for signs of flight lieutenant Savile. Four Typhoon 1Bs set off from Hearn Airport. No signs of either him or his plane were seen. All aircraft returned safely at 10.45 hours. Flight lieutenant Savile was the first pilot of 439 squadron to be lost in action. A total of 32 500 pound medium capacity bombs were covered by the Typhoons and the damage at the fort and the areas around the fort were seen. Discovering the crash site over the bay behind us. That find was reported in the Guernsey Press Weekender, and a reader of that report then wrote the letter, which reads Dear Mr. Peters, I was very interested in the Weekender dated 9th of May in 1987, which reported the crash of the Typhoon plane in Havelock Bay in 1944. 
My late brother and I were in our fishing boat over in St. Peterport Harbour at the time, and we witnessed the raid from there. We saw the planes come in from the direction of Brayon Tower, bank sharply over the town, and then dive in the direction of Fort George. There was quite a lot of fleecy white cloud over the town at times, and the planes were only visible for very short intervals. In the harbour were several very large German anti-aircraft ships which were moored on the west side of the new jetty, and these ships put up a terrible barrage. I'm certain it was these ships' guns that unfortunately were responsible for hitting the aircraft. We saw, only momentarily, an aircraft about to ditch, and then we heard a huge crash and an enormous column of water which rose high into the air see it above the castle wall from where we were situated over in the harbour. I hope the above will be of some interest to you. Yours sincerely, Jack Janone. So these guys were flying in at high speed, navigating with just a stopwatch and a compass, dodging low cloud and into an area that they knew had a huge heavy anti-aircraft defences. But they knew the importance of their mission was to press that attack on the radar up on the hill behind us. The letter highlights both the skill and the bravery of Flight Lieutenant Savile and his colleagues who accompanied him on that attack. Sadly for Flight Lieutenant Savile, those anti-aircraft defences proved to be just too effect effective. Rest in peace, Flight Lieutenant Savile. You did more than your duty. Thank <laughs> you.